If you're considering using Leadership 360s, before you jump in and start assessing members of your board of directors or your leadership team, be strategic in not only the assessment that you choose, but the reason why you're doing this in the first place and what you want your long-term end game benefit to be by using a Leadership 360. If you're simply considering using a Leadership 360 assessment tool to identify which areas each member of your leadership team or your board or a specific individual can improve, that's okay but it's potentially dangerous and not as helpful as what a Leadership 360 can actually be for an individual, your leadership team, or your board. Let me explain. When I work with clients and we do Leadership 360s with them, one of the reasons we do the Leadership 360 is to help them move some strategic initiative forward and the members of the leadership team or the board or the individual leader being assessed is somehow having a problem moving his or her responsibilities forward and therefore they're not able to fully impact the strategic plan as effectively and successfully as they would like to. That's why we're doing it. Every member of the board, every member of the leadership team is part of the team they're on because they have a set of responsibilities they're supposed to be able to fulfill in helping to drive the organization forward. If they're not able to do that, a Leadership 360 is a great tool to help pinpoint what the problem area or areas might be. So given that, when we work with clients who are asking for a Leadership 360, we always ask why up front, because the why becomes a bigger issue. We're not then stuck on a simple behavioral issue that quite often can be handled through some very strategic coaching, but the why points out a bigger reason from a team level, a board level, or from an organizational cultural level. That's what is important because then we can provide the support not only with pinpointing the behaviors or issues that need to be addressed, but tying them to specific actions to improve the overall outcome for the organization, the board, the team, whatever it might be. Let me explain a little bit more how we do this. So with the Leadership 360s, when we work with an organization to identify why they want to do this, for instance, with a board of directors who, for peer governance reasons, needs to conduct an annual 360 as part of their governance requirements to ensure the board is fulfilling its responsibilities, we want to ensure that whatever assessment tool is being used or whatever assessment process, whether it's interviews, standalone interviews, or interviews with an assessment, that the questions that are being asked and the metrics that are being used are going to be targeted for that board of directors team as well as for what that organization is trying to accomplish in its strategic plan. We do something very similar with our leadership teams and organizations when we're working with them on Leadership 360s. The reason we do this is when you link the metrics to the organization's strategic plan, we start to take away some more of the inherent anxiety and potential negative feelings from the feedback that can come from some 360s. The reason the feedback is given is because it's intended to help the individual perform his or her job better in moving the company forward. That's why we're doing it. It's not personal. It's targeted to identify specific behaviors, specific actions that are holding the person, his or her team, their department, their facility back from helping move the overall organization forward. So how we do this then is when we use the assessment and then we couple it with interviews or do standalone interviews or, or, or standalone assessment, as we're debriefing and we're looking at the overall thematic areas for improvement, we do these activities before the leadership team gathers once a quarter for their strategic planning update sessions. Now, the reason we do this timing is very intentional and it's incredibly impactful 
because when we work with the individual leaders of the leadership team or the board of directors on a quarterly basis to provide feedback and coaching on the findings from the Leadership 360, we do this before their quarterly update sessions so that we are impacting on a regular basis behaviors, we're helping them focus on specific behaviors they need to work on and focus on individually, as well as what they need to focus on as a team. This information then is fresh. So when they then start, right after these work sessions on 360s, when they then start their strategic planning update sessions, the ideas of how to control individual and team behavior are fresh in their minds. So they're better able to then enter into strategic planning updates and strategy debates from a mindset of how to engage stronger as a leader, how to control some behaviors, how to possibly bring some other behaviors forward to further help them fulfill their responsibilities as a member of that leadership team or as a member of the board. So not only in one period of time are they able to update a strategic plan more effectively, but they're able to become aware of and then practice in real time enhanced leadership behaviors. So, so the gist of this entire video is if you are looking at doing a Leadership 360, that's great. I would love to talk to you about how we can do that and how we can help you. But the key point of this is don't do them in isolation. A Leadership 360 should be tied at a bare minimum to follow on support and coaching from a qualified coach or consultant who can help the individual not only enhance individual skills, but help the leadership team enhance skills together so that they can help the organization move forward. If you're doing a Leadership 360 with your board, it's imperative that you have a skilled consultant who knows how to work with boards facilitate that process because it's a different level of personality, a different type of individual that's on those boards. So those are my thoughts with, with you today on how to do Leadership 360s that don't stand alone. Be more strategic in how you use them and when you time the feedback and support sessions to the leaders on the results of their individual Leadership 360s. Tie it to the strategic plan. I hope this was helpful for you. And my challenge for you is go out and see what you can do to identify how to become a better leader today. Take care.